We are joined by Coase, the Admiral, former Berkeley County Commission President. He is a two-star, Billy Stubblefield. Good to see you, sir. Good morning again, Rob. Great to be here as always. Former editor of the journal. She works for Hospice of the Panhandle right now. The star, Maria <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Great to have you both with us. We have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> we do that. May not contribute anything, but we have a good time. That's exactly right. I think uh, was it. I think was it. Was it Colin? I was talking to that told me he was uh, recently in your former former church there in Cannonsburg. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I was there for a baptism right, a couple of years ago. Right, you told me that. You I told me. sat in a pew that said, M. Lowe was here, carved, <laughs> carved exactly in wood. Right. With a big heart there. A big heart. Well, I'll have to talk to Colin about well, yeah. that afterwards. Or it could have been world. just a big, big star that just says, the, and you know who the, it is. Uh, <laughs> you, you know I was making that up because she wasn't a Lawrenson back then. Yeah. Right? She was just predicting. I was not. She was I not was Maria Crawl. There you go. Good name. Sure. Yeah. To the point. Our guest in this segment uh, in the news yesterday, for all the good reasons, uh, Sheriff of Berkeley County, Rob Blair. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. And Sheriff, you may have not noticed, but when you walked in, Rob immediately set up a little taller. He watched his language. He's been a little judicious in what he says. You have quite an influence on him when you walk in. He's just concerned he's going to show up on Warrant Wednesday or Wanted Wednesday. Warrant, wanted better. Wednesday. I get those releases every day. So far, I've not been on Wanted Wednesday. Uh, we'll, we'll look into that. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to come up pretty clean. Yeah. Now, if you dig into the family history... You know, good luck with that. But you never know. so far, I'm pretty clean. You know? I was able to take off of the refrigerator. I was, for the month of July, on jury duty. Um, oh, you were. But I was not never called. called yeah. and, and my husband said, and you will, you know, probably not serve if you do get called. I'm like, why not? Well, okay. <laughs> wife, wife of the judge probably doesn't get called. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, well, seated. called to serve, but yeah. probably not seated. Yeah. But I would love to serve. And he said that's exactly the reason why you would never get on yeah. a jury. So right. there you go. You you may indeed be called to be on a jury at some point in the near future. There was a massive uh, drug, bust, drug and, bust. And the sheriff involved with multiple other levels of agencies, uh, federal on down uh, with this information yesterday. Rob, tell us about this multi-person, multi-jurisdictional, multi-whatever indictments that right. handed down. Well, it's two, two separate conspiracy cases. I believe there were 17 individuals listed in the, uh, the first one. Um, and the second one, I believe, had seven. And mm -hmm. uh, yesterday morning at 5.30, um, to wrap this uh, investigation up, we had um, a briefing at the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department with all agencies uh, that could contribute to the roundup, um, that would include the city, state, federal, uh, out-of-state jurisdictions uh, that also helped in this, I think Frederick County and uh, Postal Service. Virginia or Maryland? Uh, Virginia. Virginia. Yes. And Maryland may be involved in this, too. There's so many agencies. This thing is international. Uh, Puerto Striking. Rico, Puerto Rico, they weren't here, but um, it, it, it's, um, it, it's very far-reaching. And... Um, uh, throughout yesterday, we picked up, I believe, around 20. And then um, last night, they, had, they, they picked up an individual in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, that was included in the indictment. And um, uh, during the press conference, there was one picked up in Puerto Rico. We actually, during the press conference, uh, FBI agent uh, in the back said that one was picked up in Puerto Rico. So it's a very successful roundup. Uh, uh, we have two outstanding right now. One, one is a local individual, and I, I want to get that name out in case someone um, – let me see where it's here. Uh, Juan Martin Smith, 38, of Martinsburg, West Virginia. Uh, he's still at large. And if anyone would have information of his whereabouts, they are encouraged to call either the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department, 267-7000, or um, the, the task force, I believe it's 304 two six seven zero zero two five you know sheriff i think of these drug busts are the ones as part of the gang i had the assumption that so many of them were just coming through they were from uh, philadelphia pittsburgh or wherever the case may be but the majority of these folks are local they lived in uh, shepherdstown jefferson county or the like so is that a shift that the address we're listing for these people are just where they're residing. Okay. I wouldn't call them yeah. local. Okay. Um, now, they're, they're, there's local. The way a conspiracy works, I mean, 
there's there's tentacles that go off from this that there's there's actually local people that's probably doing some some dealing with them and I, I don't have all the information this conspiracy and I don't want to get into it because there's there's federal guidelines on what you can release and what you can't but um something that was not mentioned in the press release yesterday a large portion of these people are illegal illegals so mm-hmm. uh again people don't understand uh, i don't think fully of how uh how this is affecting our society with the the uh, porous border that we have in the southern border and, and um you know a large portion of these uh, gang related and they came from the southern border. Give us an idea of the size and scope of this operation and what specifically they were doing, Rob. Well, um, I know during the um, during the course of yesterday, they they seized um, a large amount of uh, cocaine, um, some marijuana, um, some um, Xanax bars, um, four thousand dollars in uh, U.S. cash, um, firearms, uh, rounds of ammunition. Uh, packaging materials and of course all the arrests so that, that that's just what happened yesterday now as far as the conspiracy goes i like i said i don't want to get into it but conspiracies work in a way that um these officers i, I don't know how long this investigation been going on, but it probably branched off of another conspiracy uh that's the way this that's the way they work having served on the task force two different tours uh these cases take a long time uh, you can't just go out and buy bus someone and, and be done with it, put it on Facebook, and move on to the next one. That's something that we're trying to, you know, not do. We want to, if a patrol officer makes a stop uh, and seizes a large amount of drugs, we want them to contact our representative or one of the representatives on the task force and uh, provide that information. And more than likely, it's going to link into something else that they have another drug dealer or that's just the way the the networks work i mean in a conspiracy case you can be involved in a conspiracy and not know the guy on the other side of the conspiracy yet you're in the same conspiracy and in the federal system you get hit with all the the drug weight involved in that conspiracy which can uh, give you a substantial amount of time when it comes time for sentencing. In these two cases, the drugs came from Puerto Rico, but they were shipped in the country through the U.S. mail service. I I believe portions of it were. Mm -hmm. I I don't know the, again, I don't know the details of it, whatever Mm -hmm. was in the press release. Um, Yeah, that's that's a common thing that uh, they'll use uh, different methods of shipping, UPS, FedEx, Mm -hmm. uh, the Postal Service. Um, So, yeah, whatever means they can get their product out to their customers, that's that's what they'll use. And then the the um, the large scale fentanyl and cocaine trafficking was operating out of an auto body shop. An auto uh, body shop. Wow, yeah. that's um, you know that's kind of common in criminal enterprise. You'll, you'll have a front uh, business. People will think, well, that's that's just a business, and uh, the the thing actually keeping it afloat is their illegal activities. Um, How common is that? I think it's very common in large-scale conspiracy cases. I mean, they look for look for businesses to um, you know, have the appearance of a of a legit business, but um, it's really not. They're trafficking drugs through it, laundering money and whatnot. So, again, I, I don't want to get into the details of the conspiracy, but sure. that's that's a common thing. Are there other similar-scale investigations going on right now that you can share? I have no doubt there there are, um, and. Uh, Again, this is just a. Um, this is just something that uh, you, you, the prosecutor's decision and the investigator's position to, to to actually indict a conspiracy and 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 close it out. Um, but what happens now is there'll be debriefings, there'll be um, people that'll plead, and uh, they'll have information that will help on other cases. And um, it's just that I won't be surprised this doesn't connect to other crimes we've investigated. You know, and it just takes time to link up the link up the information and and um, and put two and two together. So this investigation actually began 2023. Um, so a year and change. Um, it's been going on then. Oh yeah, it, it's it's not uncommon for these conspiracy cases to take several years to to come to fruition. Sometimes, especially the the, the larger ones. Um, so yeah, that's that's not that's not uncommon at all. Typically, when does your office get involved in an investigation? Well, um, 
sometimes it's right at the front end a patrol officer which are you know the heart of our department is the patrol unit and they do the they do the work every day day in and day out and uh, they'll make a traffic stop or they'll they'll go to uh, it could be a domestic it could be a, a burglary it could be something that you know just a typical crime and, and evidence of, a, of drugs or or violent crimes or whatever will will surface from that and then it, it just passed on to the to, to the task force and we're trying to encourage that more and more i actually want to add another at least another officer to the task force because the value of the task force is immeasurable and that's what the community needs to understand rob explain to us exactly what you mean for the task force and <clears throat> what agents are, are involved yeah well the task force is um it's um uh, an uh, um, a unit that uh the martinsburg police department and and all the other um county state all the other local and county jefferson county sheriff's department they all contribute man manpower to this and the fbi contributes manpower to it uh, i know we work with um uh, atf dea uh, it's all an effort to to bring uh, the philosophy that it, uh, well fred wagner and, and gary griffith were the the ones that kind of got this thing together back in the day back in the i don't know if it was late 80s early 90s and, and it's a philosophy of um, bringing agencies together, working together cooperatively. When you come into that office, you're not the state police, you're not the Berkeley County Sheriff, you're not the FBI. You're a task force team that does does the work and does it uh, cooperatively and without you know self-serving interest. Um, and it, it's just a, it's just a good way to do work. Is it a standing organization or is it as needed organization? In other words, are you someone permanently assigned? Oh, yeah. That's where they work all the time. Permanent, permanent assignments, um, and um, it's 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 a value that this community does not recognize. It's it's probably the one of the biggest reasons we live in a an area that's livable right now. If not for the task force, you'd be overrun with drugs, violent crime, and 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 stuff you see in the city, because uh, that's the influence we get. Is this a lot of undercover work? Yes. When you're in a, uh, an investigation that involves different levels of law enforcement, Rob, who ends up calling the shots locally? Well, it depends on it's situational. Um, you know, it depends on what what uh, situation you're facing. If it's if it's related to this conspiracy, then then whoever's running the investigation would make the decisions on uh, what direction to go. If it's an immediate response, you know, it's. Uh, uh, the ranking officer uh, on scene and but uh, it's always conditional on, on who, who calls the shots who's in charge of the task force who's the titular head uh they just had a switch and you, you just asked me a question i wasn't uh, talking about one, the name as one, much so the organization well it it depends it's an okay. appointment uh it could be any from any agency we just had some retirements from the task force and i apologize i, I shouldn't have that answer but, but uh how long were you retired from the state rob I retired at the end of 2013. 2013. Tell me the difference, if any, in crime in this area from 13 to 24. Uh, it's still, it's th this area has always been um, one of the most active and, and um, when I say productive, I mean um, activity-wise from, from police agencies, just busy, busy, busy. But as the growth of the the area i can just see the uh, more so like the the traffic and and the calls for service have really really increased and uh and i will i will throw this out here i'm i'm not i'm not a member of the west virginia state police anymore but i am a retired member and when i left the state police and the, the public needs to know this there were 30 troopers and five sergeants at the martinsburg detachment and I don't have the exact number, but I believe it's around 12 or 14 troopers there now. And I'm not sure of the supervision. And that includes those in Jefferson County as well. This is Martinsburg, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, just Martinsburg. Yeah. Okay. Now that, I think there's like four troopers in Jefferson okay. County, which is mm -hmm. pathetic too. But. And they have to run regular police calls in the pre where there isn't a local presence, correct? Or to, or to help out a local presence? Yes, yes. This so, so they're not just doing Interstate 81, no. for instance? No, we... We, we actually need more deputies that I could um, permanently put out on 81. I would love to do that. And that's are, going to be my goal. Are you up to 60-something now? We're at route 61 now, and uh, <clears throat> we're getting, excuse me, sure. <clears throat> we're getting ready to hire 
Six. We just went through a, a application process. I'm glad you asked this because I can throw this out there. Um, we had, um, I think, like 24 applications clear through, and I'm not sure how many are still still active. But we're testing this Saturday. We'll do the physical test and the written test, and um, I feel confident. Uh, we have some pretty good applicants, from my understanding. I feel confident we could probably get those six positions filled. And uh, then I'm going to go back asking for a lot more. So. A lot more. I keep hearing the number 100 floated around. Is well, that a aspirational number, or can is something you really need to have 100? Oh, uh, 100 be would be wonderful right now. But we actually, when when I when I came into office, there was a already a move. Uh, the county administrator and some of the staff were working towards a a, a vision of 140, mm. uh, and uh, that's. That's not, uh, of course, we're looking at a north, a north substation and a south substation. Uh, and uh, with 140 deputies, um, we have to look at how we're going to manage that. And we've tried to do some, um, some uh, rank structure um, improvements through the uh, uh, Civil Service Commission, the County Commission. We've presented that to them, and they're, they're on board with it. So uh, we're looking forward to, to growing with this community. <clears throat> Right now, at what we're at, um, we're, we're, we're stretched thin. Yeah, these numbers are not just out of your hip pocket. There are certain standards which are nation, national standards which we fall far behind in yes. meeting. Is that correct? Yes, and I don't have those statistics yeah. with me, but it's, it's a citizen per, <clears throat> per officer ratio that, that is kind of a standard, uh, yeah. and we're nowhere near it. Yeah. We're, we're way behind the... Uh, and that's even taken into account the Martinsburg City Police Department, which I'm, I'm sure they're understaffed, uh, too. And, uh, of course, like I've mentioned, the state police. But um, And I know people say that all – you hear that all the time. They're understaffed, understaffed. It is true here. It is – I was doing some calculations on the growth of, of Berkeley County. I think when I came here, like 57,000 people in 89. Yeah. What, we're 130, 140? I don't even know what it is right now. Yeah. Uh, when I was county commission, uh, we were understaffed at that time, uh, and I think we had 56, 58. So yeah. now you're at 60, 66. 67 is our 67. funding. And position. with uh, with something like 17 years of fairly rapid growth. Yes. So you're getting farther and farther and farther behind. Yes, yes. So, it, so yeah. Sheriff, does in those 67 deputies, do – People have specific areas of specialty. I mean, are some guys purely patrol guy and women? <laughs> yes. um, Canine. Uh, yes. Purely patrol and some yeah. who are uh, drug investigators. Some. How does that, or does everybody do kind of everything? Well, the heart of our department is the patrol unit. They, they do <clears throat> the day-to-day -day calls and, and uh, <clears throat> they do the majority of the work. Excuse me. Sure. <clears throat> but we also have a criminal investigation division, uh, which they do an outstanding job. We have a SWAT team. Now, the SWAT team is not a full-time team. It's pulled from patrol or whoever wants to be a part of it. They have to meet qualifications for that. Um, we have a uh, dive team. We have canines. Uh, we the dive team is pretty cool. <clears throat> yes, I saw that firsthand. Well, not in a... You know, not in a pond or anything, but I don't think people realize um, right. just the scope of um, of the officers and what you all do. Yeah. We, so. we we love giving tours of the office, having community groups come in to show them what we're. They understand the the, the enormity of of what we did. We also hired a police social worker here a few months ago, which has <clears throat> been a real benefit to us. She's she's doing a great job and. It's going to be a benefit to our officers, too. And Is she in uniform? No. She's a civilian. She's not a sworn yeah. officer. Uh, your association relationship with the with the city, and I know the state police you, have, uh, you work very closely with, uh, there in times past has been a little bit of friction between the city and the county, but it's my understanding those are the days of old that you work very, very close together now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I know Aaron Gibbons really well. He does a tremendous job, and he's got a tremendous responsibility on his shoulders. Uh, Captain Burkhart and Sergeant Nine over to the detachment. Uh, I know them personally. Um, and uh, my goal is, is I come from the task force philosophy like I just spoke about. 
And, and you can have that philosophy in law enforcement th- between agencies. You don't have to look at someone and say, well, he's a city officer, he's a trooper, he's a, he's, he's a deputy, and you're police officers. You're in this fight together. And I, I always go back to it, the, the Spessert and Bean incident, when everyone came together on that. It was a tragic, but we had a deputy that, that rode with Abe during that yeah. tragic event. And, um, you know, it's it's something that you have to work cooperatively together in order to, to serve your community the, the best. Sheriff Ron Blair, our guest here on the program, you mentioned uh, potentially 140, 100, any jumping off points in between. If you had the budget tomorrow to go to 100, could you even hire that many deputies to get to 100? Is there a pool of people like that out there? Well, that is a great question, and I, I don't think um, – I, hopefully I'm – I'm, I'm serving the next four years as sheriff, and I, I would love to, at the end of that, get close to that number um, and uh, because it's going to take an effort. And I'll, I go back again. You know, we're, we're living the fruits of defund the police and all that, uh, all that stuff that, uh, you know, I said it at the time. This is going to be detrimental to law enforcement. And it's not just the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department. It's, it's nationwide. Uh, for and I can't blame some people, maybe not wanting to get into law enforcement because of what is what has been, and we make mistakes and mistakes of effort. I tell my guys all the time are are things that we can deal with, but uh, the, some of these things that happen in law enforcement are, you know, quite frankly inexcusable. But we do do a good job about policing our own, and um, we need good quality, qualified people uh, to to apply for police positions but i don't think we're going to get to 100 overnight it's going to take a big effort a big recruiting effort and we tried to do some things this last time in our recruiting to to beef up uh, our numbers and we got twice the number of applicants i believe we did the the time before i don't know what the reason for that was but hopefully it was our efforts in, in reaching out we're going to do better next time I'm, I'm in this thing six months now, so we're, we're kind of learning as we go, and mm-hmm. we're going to do a better Be, job recruiting. I mean, that's because a- of salaries and equities. We were at one time viewed as training grounds for <clears throat> Jefferson County and the neighboring states. Have we corrected those salary and inequities? Uh, to a level, but that's always a moving target. Um, I, I know we're looking at uh, now trying to, to increase the, some of our, our salaries because – you know what happens is we we get a good package together and we get it get it through and and the guys and, and the next thing you know the, the next jurisdiction over they they one up you and then yeah. it, it's it, it's you know and I don't want to call it a competition but you know everyone's looking to get quality police officers and they'll do what they they think they need to do to make that happen. I was going to say though, but with twenty four <clears throat> applicants for six positions, you have to feel good about that correct feel better than the i think 14 we had last time Mm -hmm. Uh, i think we had eight positions then we did fill two of those Mm -hmm. we have one in the academy and uh one i believe does not start until september because of military obligations Uh, and that's another thing we got some guys that are getting ready to get deployed um so that's going to knock our numbers down um deployed you have people in the reserves Uh, in the reserves yeah I, i think it's a I think it's a border thing or something. I don't know. Okay. Funny how they're going to get to the border now. So, but, uh, Rob, thank you very much for coming in. Much appreciated. Yeah. Sheriff Rob I appreciate Blair. you having me. Absolutely. And if you're interested in finding out more about a job with the Sheriff's Department, how do you get in touch with you, Rob? Uh, the Sheriff's Department? Yeah. Uh, 304-267-7000 uh, is our number, and um, we're, we're here to serve the community. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 